Let's get spur. Just last year, several leading Democrats in the Senate, moderates, including Amy Klobuchar and Mark Warner of Virginia, sent a letter to the three largest vendors of election systems in our country. Those companies included Election Systems and Software, Dominion Voting Systems, Inc., and Hart InterCivic. The letter the senator sent read this way, quote, the integrity of our elections is directly tied to the machines we vote on, the products that you make. There has been a lack of meaningful innovation in the election vendor industry, and our democracy is paying the price. Republicans, we should say, shared that concern. Just last year, examiners for the Texas Secretary of State rejected the idea of using Dominion voting systems in Texas. They raised concerns about whether the system was, quote, safe from fraudulent or unauthorized manipulation. For the past three years, Democrats lined up on television to warn exactly that. They said we could be minutes away from a full-scale hack of our democracy itself. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. I continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. Researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tampering. In Arizona, malware was installed in the state elections website. Voters in Georgia and Texas saw electronic voting machines deleting votes and switching them to other candidates. Our election system and our digital infrastructure are still exceptionally vulnerable to attack. Unsecured machines that might as well have the words scrawled on them, please hack me, comrade, in Russian. Russia. So try to put aside the Russian nonsense. Nothing, by the way, no lie in our lifetimes has so thoroughly degraded confidence in our systems, done more to make the population paranoid and afraid than the Russia lie. And people should be held accountable for that. They haven't been. They should be. But the point here is that Democrats have been warning about electronic election fraud for a long time, long before Donald Trump showed up. In 2014, for example, the left-wing outlet Vox tweeted that, quote, 68% of Americans think elections are rigged. Ron Klain, who apparently is now set to become the chief of staff to Joe Biden, agreed with that. That's because they are, Klain replied. It's now fair to ask if Ron Klain had a point. And let's get specific in this. Consider the state of Georgia, where the presidential race is currently within about 15,000 votes. Georgia uses Dominion's voting system. Now, to be clear, we are not alleging that that system was hacked. We're not alleging that it was written to throw the election to Joe Biden. If there's evidence of that, show it to us. But the problems with that system are intrinsic, and here's one of them. It doesn't produce a paper trail of a voter's decision. Instead, the state of Georgia uses something called ballot marking devices, BMDs, for in-person voting. The machines print a piece of paper indicating the candidate the machines say the voter chose. And that's supposed to be reassuring, but it's not really evidence of voter intent, is it? No, it's not. And according to a paper published in February by researchers at Princeton, Georgia Tech, and Berkeley, ballot marking devices are not secure. Quote, BMDs are also subject to hacking, bugs, and misconfiguration of the software that prints the marked ballots. Most voters do not review BMD printed ballots, and those who do often fail to notice when the printed vote is not what they expressed on the touchscreen. There is no action a voter can take to demonstrate to election officials that a BMD altered their expressed votes. End quote. So there's no way to check, and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, that's not good. Who thought this up? It requires a level of faith that we no longer have in the United States in our system, and we need to change that. By the way, it's not unique to Georgia, and it's not unique to Dominion. Philadelphia County, for example, doesn't use Dominion. That county uses election systems and softwares, Express Vote XL. According to a report in Bloomberg News, Express Vote XL caused chaos in polling stations last year. Quote, in one case, it turned out a candidate that the Excel showed getting just 15 votes had won by 1,000. Neither Northampton nor the vendor knew what went wrong. So how'd that happen? Well, it was the software. The software in question was so unreliable that a Berkeley professor called Philip Stark told Bloomberg bluntly that, quote, there's no reason to believe that the paper trail generated by the Excel accurately reflects voter selections. That's still true. It will remain true, no matter how many 32-year-old news reporters pop up on your screen and demand you stop worrying about it because everything is fine and the experts say it's all foolproof and impossible to hack. 
At best, they've got no idea what they're talking about. And at worst, they're lying. Either way, this is a real problem, no matter who the president is, because increasingly, Americans don't trust technology. And why would they? They've seen Google at work. They know how easily technology can abet corruption, and they know how often it is, which is a lot, every day. The people who've thought about this most, election integrity, believe that hand-marked paper ballots are the safest way to vote and inspire the most confidence, which is key for the system to work. Democrats like Ron Wyden, to his credit, have argued for paper ballots for years. And maybe we ought to listen. We need to do something. Something needs to change. And soon, no democracy can survive many more elections like this one.